So it be possible for you to demonstrate the billing solution, you know, that you use for Alistair for, for the audience. Sure, with pleasure, Aaron. I will uh, try to present from a live uh, portal what um, we are using in matter of features, like the main feature that we are uh, using uh, today uh, for um, our uh, production environment. So um, confirm, me, confirm to me that uh, you see my screen. I just shared it. Yep, I can see the screen. Uh, uh, Thanks okay, you. perfect. So, perfect. Uh, so, as um, you know, there is uh, two portals. So, there is the admin portal, which is uh, this one, and uh, the tenant portal, uh, which is uh, to end uh, customer. So, the admin portal, like you see here, is uh, in um, software as a service. So, it's hosted uh, by the Cloud Assert team. So, we don't have to get any server, any VM on our cloud or our premises so we are access this via web uh, in uh, uh, in self service uh, in matter of uh, hosting so then i access on this portal or my um, colleagues uh, cloud operator or our um, account managers sales team so they access this portal to see the billing of our customer so i uh, end up uh, in the uh, dashboard so here is the dashboard of uh, the uh, cloud asset billing for Azure Stack Hub. So I will start by uh, seeing uh, the number of uh, tenants or customers that I have on uh, my uh, platform uh, in matter of uh, customer uh, tenants. Then I will see the subscription. For example, I have customers that have multiple subscriptions. I have customers that have one subscription. So uh, this will uh, provide me the total number of subscription that I have on uh, my uh, solution. Uh, it will also provide uh, the current uh, billing amount, total current billing amount of uh, all my customers for this month and the projected uh, for the end of the month. Uh, let's say there is three days or two days uh, uh, left on this month, so uh, it will uh, provide the projection that uh, will be uh, on uh, the rest of uh, the month. Uh, it also talks about CSP license, but it's not something that uh, we are using uh, today. So uh, this uh, is a uh, uh, monthly trend and uh, also is uh, interesting because it compares the current month uh, with uh, uh, the last month. So in matter of sales strategy, uh, we are able to see if you are doing growth or uh, if we are uh, losing uh, customers or if we are losing business. So it's very interesting, uh, uh, of course, to see that we are maintaining uh, almost the same uh, trends or at the other times we are growing in matter of uh, uh, billing. So that's also interesting uh, feature or um, let's say presentation uh, on the dashboard to see all this uh, information. Uh, we can also uh, see more months in the billing cycle. Here we have a view on six months based. So, um, of course, there is some changes in uh, some customers. For example, here we had uh, a big customer that uh, were using pay as you go, then switch it to a fixed fee model. So that's why we uh, removed that customer from the dashboard. So it's not a matter of uh, us losing a customer, but uh, uh, it's just that one customer, big customer switch it to a fixed fee model with, uh, with our hosting offering. Uh, but here, uh, like I said, we have the ability to see for six months, uh, uh, range uh, the amount total amounts of uh, billing that we are doing to all our uh, customer and this will like i said from a sales perspective uh, help us uh, follow the trend uh, of our uh, hosting business so then i could uh, uh, drill down a bit more uh, into uh, details i will start with the pricing in matter of uh, uh, chronology for uh, the presentation. So the pricing is the base that we use to um, to bill our customers. So for example, here I have two pricing uh, profiles. So uh, each pricing profile is related to one data center. So here my pricing profile for my first data center and I create the prices uh, as I want. So I can have the template from Cloud Assert, which is uh, aligned on Microsoft Azure Public Cloud and then I could change it 
So I could uh, um, build each resources uh, granularly uh, with the granularity. So I can build the capacity storage, the VM sizes. So each VM sizes, I can put a price on it. Uh, so to be able to uh, track all the uh, resources that the customer could create on uh, the Azure Stack Hub and then uh, build the right amounts for each uh, uh, resources. So like I said, uh, we have uh, two billing uh, price profile. So this is for the second data center and same thing, we'll be putting the price. But like I said, there is a difference for us from matter of uh, business need in matter of pricing storage. So uh, we uh, have the flexibility to create uh, two price profile and uh, put the, the, the correct price on each region. Once we have the price profile, then uh, we can uh, start uh, creating uh, customers. So we uh, declare those customers or create those customers on the portal to give them access uh, to the to the billing uh, um, portal. So I create the, the customer and uh, put its name, create the user that uh, will be created on Azure uh, Active Directory. So also another advantage that I don't have to uh, manage or uh, maintain uh, a database of login and passwords is used via Azure Active Directory. Uh, so I create, like I said, the customer uh, name, for example, let's say cloud cert, uh, then um, I will be uh, applying one of the two uh, pricing profiles called offer, offer here, we'll talk about it later. So uh, I will apply, for example, the pricing profile, and then, for example, I will put uh, the email uh, for uh, the contact on that customer. Uh, also, I can uh, put uh, the uh, country, and uh, then uh, I could uh, create the login and password. So uh, actually the login and then the customer will create his password when he has the email uh, sent to him uh, in matter of uh, access. So uh, after I create uh, that uh, customer, so I am able to uh, manage the users, of course, the access uh, uh, user for uh, the customer. So I'd be able to activate, disactivate, uh, um, add uh, or more users for the customer. Once uh, that customer have um, access to the portal, I will be uh, mapping uh, his um, Azure Stack Hub uh, subscription to the hyper uh, solution. That way the customer will be able uh, to see uh, how much uh, uh, billing uh, he have on uh, that uh, uh, particular uh, subscription. So um, the, uh, the mapping subscription is also interesting because uh, it will show me not only the subscription that are mapped and the ones that we are, uh, let's say, already billing, but it also show me the ones that are not mapped. For example, if you say, you, oh, you have a customer that you just imported on your stack and you are not following that customer uh, uh, billing. So if you want, we can map that. That way we will be able to track uh, uh, the customer billing and uh, we will be able to invoice him. So also that's uh, uh, something uh, interesting. So once we have done all the configuration needed for the uh, customer uh, billing, uh, we'll be able to see its, uh, its each customer consumption. So for example, here I have, uh, I went back to the billing uh, view and went to subscription. So here the currency, like I said, we are able to use and we configured the currency in Tunisian dinar, which is the local Tunisian uh, currency, something that the customers like to see uh, his uh, uh, billing in, its, uh, in his uh, uh, local currency. So here, of course, we have the uh, history of months. Uh, that uh, we have been uh, using uh, Hyper to, to build uh, our customers. So, for example, if I go back to, to August, uh, we'll uh, see uh, the consumption of my customer on August. So uh, also another interesting feature, I will be able to sort those uh, customers by uh, total cost or uh, by company name or uh, by whatever, by whatever uh, let's say, information I want. So for example, here I will have my biggest customers sorted uh, uh, in matter of uh, total cost. Uh, and then uh, I will be uh, able to see uh, the, the consumption of uh, each one of them. 
then uh, after that, I can drill uh, to the details if I want to see uh, per uh, resource type how much uh, that uh, customer uh, consumed uh, uh, for, for that specific month. If I want more details and want to see uh, VM by, by VM, uh, resource by resource, I'm able to see that from the report uh, view. So I can go the same, go to August, uh, sort again, so go back to the same customer and I will be able to see a download meter users. So this will download a CSV file with all the details uh, of the billing of that customer for that specific month. So the, this file will be uh, providing all the information for us or for the uh, end customer to uh, see all his consumption. Like I said, hour per hour, resource by resource. So it'll be like sorting a bit this file to be more visible. So I will organize it just a little bit. It's in French, so hopefully it's not an issue. Okay, so uh, for example, let me hear this a bit. Could hide a few that I don't need. Okay, so it will provide the subscription ID for that customer. That way I can verify and the customer can double check that his uh, sub, uh, consumption is related to him. Uh, of course, it's Azure Stack uh, based consumption. It will provide uh, the type of uh, the resources, if it's uh, network, uh, if it's uh, storage or uh, if it's uh, compute. So that's the, the service type. Uh, so that's something, uh, let's say the main um, organization of resources. Then there is another more granular organization, which is uh, the metered resource name. So uh, we will see per VM type, per disk. Uh, for example, the customer could uh, go and say uh, how many VM I have on the DS3 V2. So he will see all his VM on that VM size. So that is also something interesting in matter of visibility. So we also have the resource name, of course, uh, the uh, the name of uh, the VM or the, the disk, etc., which is uh, the identificator of each resources. We also extract the resource group. So uh, if the customer have his resource organized per resource group uh, on his uh, Azure Stack tenant, so we will see those uh, resource groups. And something also interesting, which is a, a new feature that uh, have been added on Hyper recently by the CloudSer team, uh, is the ARM tags. So if a customer have organized his resources based on Microsoft Azure Stack ARM, so we'd be able to see those ARM tags here uh, in the extract. So for example, here I have a group of companies that uh, decided for a uh, business need uh, reason to share the same uh, subscription so they have their ERP and the say they use the same ERP so they uh, wanted to share the, the, sub the, the subscription usually uh, each company have its own subscription so we don't uh, have any issue uh, separating billing, but this specific customer has a specific business need to host uh, two companies, it's a group of companies, to host those two companies on the same subscription. So uh, billing them separately were, were, were not uh, at all easy without uh, Hiber. So with Hiber and specifically with the, this feature, we are able to ask the customer to each one of them tag uh, his resources with his uh, uh, name on the ARM. So then I will just filter on that ARM tag for the customer, first customer name. This is a chain of supermarkets. So uh, one of the supermarkets, uh, Jean, the other is Monoprix. So uh, we'll uh, filter on that and see the resources related only to that ARM tag. So it can be departments in many uh, uh, other, uh, let's say, um, Companies can be department, and each department can have its tag. Can uh, can be a development environment, production environment, etc. So tags can also uh, be used in many uh, ways. 
of course we'll uh, have the dates so uh, for each day the consumption per day of the month we'll be uh, seeing the number of hours that the resource have been used for example uh, this disk of course it's 24 hours uh, for example the vm 24 hours we have uh, this customer that is using um, azure uh, automation to start and stop his vms on azure stack hub to optimize consumption so for example you can see that not all vms are running 24 hours and this is also tracked by hyper as you can see for example this vm run eight hours per day, which is also uh, interesting for the customer to be uh, on the pay as you go uh, model. Uh, of course, this is like I said in French. Uh, so uh, in Excel sheet, uh, this is uh, comma separated. So I can like just fix that very quickly because I'm using Excel in a French version, not an English version. So, and here I will be seeing the amount. Tunisian dinar have three uh, decimal after the comma, and this is of course a number. Uh, so here I will be seeing the total cost. And for example, we said this was like 19,000 something. So of course I will find the total of 19,000 something in the Excel sheet. So uh, like I said, day by day, uh, resource by resource. So um, this is very, very interesting uh, and the granular um, exposition of the pricing of each customer and uh, help us a lot uh, when uh, trying to do the invoicing of the customer. We give them an invoice. The customer just have this file. It's a justification that he used the right uh, amount that we have uh, invoiced uh, by our uh, sales team. So like I said, uh, very interesting, uh, very rich features. Uh, in hyper, uh, in matter of reporting, uh, in matter of following uh, the consumption, the pricing profile, the user credit. Like I said, we can create a user credit and put a prepaid amount, and then uh, the customer will be uh, using from that uh, prepaying uh, amount. So uh, also ability to uh, personalize. If you want uh, the currency, we can uh, uh, personalize uh, the. Um, if that uh, amount, if you want to apply that or not, for example, we are not uh, applying the tax uh, on on um, our business model here because we are applying that on our ERP system, but also it's uh, uh, something that can be done uh, in Hyper. We can even simulate uh, invoice uh, on Hyper. That's something that can be done also and uh, have a simulated invoice uh, before uh, creating the final invoice on uh, our uh, ERP. Uh, we even have a price calculator. Uh, we can uh, start by creating uh, some uh, simulation and then we could like uh, share that simulation with the customer. So something that uh, our team started uh, exploring. I'm still not very familiar with it, but it's very easy to use as you can see. So I'll be able to, for example, uh, uh, choose a VM and then uh, we have the price and that price, something is important, is extracted directly from uh, our pricing profile. It's not something that is uh, taken from Azure or public cloud or something. It's uh, get directly from our price. So it will be a very correct and very uh, precise uh, pricing uh, estimation that can be uh, used by our sales uh, executive to present uh, um, finance or, uh, financial uh, offer to, to, to some customer. So this is mainly, uh, let's say, uh, the features that I wanted to share with you. And of course, if uh, you have some question or something that uh, is missing, you just tell me and I uh, will uh, talk about it.